Hi, this is Paul Zimmer with Dance Demos again. I did a video a while back about recording the cues using a flow that's just in Audacity. And I mentioned in there one of the advantages of doing it that way is easier to stop and start and patch and that kind of thing. But I want to do this as a separate video because these techniques might be useful even if you don't record cues the same way I do. Um, so the basic idea here is we've got uh, the music in the left channel and the cue in the right channel. This could have pulled in from a split channel MP3 or from the Audacity project where I first recorded it. Anyway, um, what's happening is if you, you say you're going along and you stumble on a cue partway through, um, we'll pretend it was that cue right there. So it's, I pretend for a minute that I never recorded that, so I'll just delete that. So I got to this cue and I went, oops, I messed that up. Rather than back up and start from the beginning, I can actually go back and record from the previous good cue. So what I do is I highlight the part of the cue I want to remove and probably the exp expletive that went with it and hit delete again. And then I back up here a few cues, just click in that area someplace. And then when I hit shift R on the keyboard, it'll pick up and it'll start recording from this spot and I'll be able to hear my previous cues. And then I just pick up where I left off. Roll back three, face lying wall, three step, continuous hover cross, extended. And I don't know what the cue is here, but whatever it is, I would just keep on cueing until I got to the end. Okay, so now I've got, pretend this is all the way through and I have a whole bunch of cues in here. I've finished it. So I actually have it split between two, two tracks. So the way I'm going to deal with this is I got to make sure they're both slid all the way to the right. And before I, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix those two tracks together. Um, before I do that, I want to make sure that there's no additional noise being added in. So I already lopped off the part here. So let me zoom down a little bit. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take anything from the beginning of that over to the first cue and I'm going to do control L, which silences. And then I'm going to grab anything after the last cue and I'm going to delete it. So now I have two nice clean tracks. I go up to see that. I went up to full view. I like to see what's going on, make sure that it mixed correctly. So then I'm going to select that track by clicking on it, and then I'm going to do control click to select that one as well. And then I'll come up and I'll say tracks, mix, mix and render. Now it mixed it into a stereo, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on a little arrow. I'm going to say split stereo to mono, get rid of the empty track and drag the thing over to the right again. So now I have, if this had been all the rest of the thing queued, now I have the entire thing put back together again. I was able to fix that one cue. So the other possibility, I'm going to undo my way out of this stuff. So the other possibility is I was queuing along and I made a mistake and I just kept going. Or maybe I didn't realize I made a mistake until after I listened to it. And then I realized I need to change it. So a couple of ways to fix an individual cue once it's already recorded. And you can imagine what I'm going to do here. Say that's the one I want to fix. I'll just go down on that cue and I'll select it. So this is one way of doing it. I'll select it and I do control L to silence it. Then like before, I go back someplace back here, wherever I want to go. I find my place in the cue sheet. I do shift R. Three checking. Roll back three, face lying wall, three step, continuous hover cross, extended, and off I go queuing again. I queue that one cue and then I shut up and stop. Hit the stop button. And then I'm going to do what I would do before. I clean this part up, I clean that part up, I shift this all the way to the right, I mix the two down, split up stereo to mono, delete the empty track, etc. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to control Z my way out of it because I want to show you a different way of doing it. So that's that's one way to do it is just to re-record that cue. Another way to do it is to go and find that cue someplace else. Um, so let's say I go over here and I like the way I said the cue that time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that and I'm going to do control C to copy it. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go up to tracks, add new, mono. Then I'm going to go down here where that where the cue is that I'm going to replace, click in, the, in approximately the right place, paste it in, zoom down, 
grab this thing and drag it around till it lines up with the timing of the old cue, and now I'll go in and say Control L, quiet it down, clean this, clean that, etc. Combine them in the same way that I showed you before. One more hacking trick. So suppose that we were listening, dancing the cues in my little group. And I discovered that, whoops, that cue is just a little bit early, or maybe it's just a little bit late. That's actually pretty easy to fix. So let's suppose that I want to make it earlier. So I'm going to go in here after after that cue, and I hit Control I. There's a it's an edit thing or whatever. I just remembered it's called Control I, and it does a cut there. And then I go over close to this one. Whoops, that didn't take. Sorry, Control I, and I go over here and I do Control I. Then I select that thing and I delete it. Then I go over here and I go Control I, and now I have this thing and I can move it earlier. And of course, you can do a similar thing to make it later. I go over here, Control I, delete this one, and now I can move it any place I want. So I can move individual cues around rather than have to requeue the whole thing. Now this stuff is particularly useful to a beginning queuer like me because. Who knows what I'm going to get if I try to requeue it from scratch, but this way at least I can get the best possible set of cues after I've danced it and everything's ready to go. So that's the technique I use for editing my cues in Audacity. If you have any ideas to share, contact me at dancedemos at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.